Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. Today we are looking at Unity 2019.2. Now this was actually released yesterday, but I decided to cover it today because there was another major release yesterday of Blender 2.80. And with that release, I decided it would really overshadow this video. So I'm doing this one about 12 hours later. So I apologize for the slight delay, but I hope it makes sense why. And what we're looking at here is an incremental release to Unity 2019.2. With the way they're doing things, there's nothing in here that is going to really shock you because most of what is under development is quite obvious from the beta and the biggest thing here is we are now using this package approach so you're seeing things get added as packages early on and then they kind of get iterated and improved a bit over time eventually they get released fully and that's kind of how the development cycle works for unity that means that the development itself is much more in the open uh, but it means that when these new releases happen there's not that many shocks there so here we are to day and I'm starting off with demonstrating probably my favorite feature in this release and it's a pretty minor feature for the most part to a lot of people anyways but I like it and that is the addition of 2D lighting. Now this actually is handling this is really a two-part release it's actually built on top of the new uh, lightweight render pipeline 2D render so if you want to create a new 2D render you can create a project and then just kind of create it come in here go to create rendering lightweight render pipeline and then create both a pipeline asset and then a 2D renderer experimental. Now again, this is experimental. Just like just about everything else with Unity these days, it is a package. So you're gonna wanna come into package, make sure that the lightweight render pipeline is enabled. Um, and I believe that the, uh, the 2D pipeline is separate and a lot of the other things we're going to talk about today, um, things like uh, shader graph, uh, poly brush, uh, Pro Builder and so on, those are all packages as well. So get really used to this screen. You're gonna spend a lot of time at it. But once you've gone ahead and enabled the 2D um, uh, lightweight rendering and actually gone into your edit and then project settings and of course go over to graphics and set that as the active renderer, then what you will find is you can now create 2D lights among other features. But 2D lights is the big one that I really like. So you see here in this demo scene, uh, this is a sprite-based light, and as you move it around in the scene, the effects are very obvious. But you see how it interacts with other objects in the scenes. This one here is a parametric light. We'll move that around. It's a much more subtle effect, but you can see it there. Here we have a very different light. This one is a freeform light. And again, you move it in the scene, and you can very pronounced see what it's doing. Um, and then here is a point light. You can set that up. You change the uh, angle or the degrees that it's affecting. And now you can easily create dynamic 2D lights in your 2D games. And this is a really, really cool feature. Another thing that they've done here is, and I did an example. I hooked it up to this guy right here. Now we've also got new shader options. So where did I create that guy? It's here. So now you can in 2D create shader graphs, 2D nodes, and everything there works wonderfully and great. There's a lot of setup things. You've got to match uh, the naming convention that they require, but now you can actually create um, sprite shaders, lit and unlit sprite shaders, and directly inside of shader graph. Now, shader graph also got some love. We're going to see that in just a second as we jump into the release notes. In fact, let's do that right now. So we're going to head on over to the Unity websites. Of course, I will link to all of these things uh, after the fact. So a link to the article down below will have links to all of the things we're looking at right here but what they've done now is they've really split out the uh, release notes into multiple sections and they're organized very nicely so what you see is we now have release notes for artisan designer tools programmer tools features uh, platform and editor updates and then graphic features and updates and then each one of these we'll jump through it very quickly so you see it's broken down into sections now and by the way unity if you're there i really like the way you're organizing these release notes it's wonderful please keep doing it for future releases it makes it very nice and easy to break down what is new in this release at least as far as it can when a lot of what's new is, is incremental improvements on existing packages. So these more in-depth release notes make it easier to track what is new. And two of the major things we're going to see here on tools are um, two packages or plugins or add-ons that they purchased a couple of years back made available free and have been kind of incrementally improving them since then. One is Polybrush, which is now in preview. Polybrush allows you to complex um, 
Sculpt complex shapes from 3D models, position details, mesh. You can paint objects in the scenes and place entities in the scenes using PolyBrush. And then the other one is Pro Builder. Now, Pro Builder is basically turns uh, Blender, I'm oh, sorry, yeah, Unity into a 3D model. It's great for um, doing mock ups or nav meshes or so on. Um, so, for quick prototyping, you will love Pro Builder. I did a video about Pro Builder and PolyMesh in the past, and they're probably something I will revisit in the future because there have been a lot of improvements to both. Now, the one thing you will see, PolyBrush is still marked as preview, but ProBuilder actually has graduated. So ProBuilder is considered a verified and released production-ready package right now. So those are both available now. We've got 2D animation with swappable sprites. We've got DSP graph audio mixing rendering system. This is their new uh, thing that they did along with their... Um, the burst compiler stuff for audio production. Um, so we add DSP graph as part of the C-sharp job systems. Uh, you can use it with burst compiler. It's completely expensive in C-sharp, enabling audio programmers and audio system developers to build their own custom audio systems. Uh, then we've got 2D with shader graph. We saw that very briefly. Um, so along with the 2D renderer in the lightweight render pipeline, which I demonstrated a second ago, you now have two master nodes in shader graph to create 2D shaders from materials using 2D sprites in the lightweight render pipeline, sprite lit and sprite unlit. Um, we've also got other improvements to the uh, visual effects graph and shader graph. There is now a grouping option. Um, improvements include new color modes will let you change which colors get displayed in your graph, as well as precision modes which lets you um, set nodes to use less GPU memory, which increases performance. Um, and then we've got control for sRGB linear color in video clips. And now on to the, um, I think this is the graphics section. Yep, so we've got the new 2D lighting and pixel perfect options in the lightweight render pipeline. I demonstrated that briefly. Do watch this video, though. It really showcases what you can do with the new lighting systems. Uh, we do have shader graph improvements, kind of a duplication between the two release notes there, unfortunately. Uh, there are lighting updates, including um, noise stuff. I think that's actually a separate, yeah, that's a separate point. Um, ProBlit GI contributors. Basically, I think this is just a change in name, to be honest. GPU light mapper improvements. Now, do remember, I did this in a video a few weeks back. They're actually removing the existing light, uh, light baking solution. So they're going to be improving their own built-in stuff more and more as time goes on. Um, HD render pipeline updates uh, have been approved. Matte cap debug view mode. A new ambient occlusion effect is, um, is a space screen algorithm that gives you better quality, especially for small-scale details while providing good performance. We have shadow layer options in the light layer system, allowing you to decouple shadows from lighting. HD render pipeline updates for shader graph. Uh, we've got HD render pipeline updates for shader graph and VR projects. Uh, again, this goes back to light mapping. They've implemented NVIDIA Optics uh, AI denoiser and Intel's open image denoise, um, both the, kind of the same thing, same end effect, and visual effects graph updates again. So there is a little bit of um, duplication in the way the release notes work now. And then next up, we have things in terms of uh, programmer tools. Um, not a whole lot here. So we got iOS improvements, including notch support or cutout support options. Uh, we have burst compiler updates. So the burst compiler takes C sharp jobs. Da, 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 da. In this release, the burst compiler 1.1 includes several improvements for JIT or just in time compilation and C sharp type cache API. In editor code, type cache provides a fast way to access types or methods marked with specific attributes as well as types derived from uh, specific classes or interfaces. Uh, physics clothing so or cloth solver. We've updated the cloth solution to use NV Cloth Solver as part of our transition from Physics 3.4 to Physics 4.x. Uh, DSP Graph, again, um, the audio engine that they've added in. VTune Amplifier Support. Um, we've got IDE support for moving to packages. It's actually kind of interesting. You'll now find Visual Studio Code and JetBrains Rider integration are actually packages now, uh, which is kind of interesting. Uh, .NET 4.x is now the default. This is well overdue, but basically now uh, the .NET implementation uh, that's enabled as standard in Unity is not from the absolute stone ages anymore, which is nice. And then incremental garbage collection. Uh, I think this was turned on by default previously. Um, on all platforms, but WebGL in 2019.2. So, uh, so it shipped as an experiment on some platforms in 2019.1 and all platforms, but WebGL in 2019.2. 
Okay, and uh, what this is basically, instead of having Garbage Collection kick in all at once and bring your game to a grinding halt, they're trying to spread Garbage Collection across multiple frames as much as possible um, so that it won't have as big of a spike effect on your game. And then finally, we have the new platform and editor stuff. This is by far and away the shortest section here. We've got optimized frame pacing for Android, improved OpenGL support. Um, so what we saw here is to improve performance on low-end devices that don't support metal, approximately a quarter of iOS devices. Uh, so that's OpenGL uh, multi-threading on iOS, and hopefully you'll get some performance as a uh, result of that. At least that's, again, on older devices. Metal's been around for whew, probably about iPhone 6 or 7 era and iPad, new iPad. So three or four generations probably there. Uh, APK size check for using Android app bundle. New function makes it easier to know the final application size for different targets. Uh, editor features available in package manager. Uh, so basically more things have been split out into packages, 2D tile map, 2D sprite editor, and Unity UI. SDK loading and management system for alternate reality and virtual reality, and a bunch of AR updates, including face tracking, 2D image tracking, 3D object tracking, environment probes, motion capture, um, people occlusion and collaborative sessions and that my friends is everything in this particular release now if you're interested they have a full-blown line by line release notes uh but they're they're borderline unreadable at this point in time to be honest because it's so confusing what is actually new to a change etc in these particular releases but like i can say there is definitely enough in unity 2019.2 um to be excited about it's, it's an improvement we didn't see a lot of stuff that's new that's added and i actually think that is a good thing because we're kind of getting to the point where they just need to take what they've got and make it more production ready and that seems to be mostly what has happened in this particular release and then once again i really like the love that 2d got i like that you've got lit unlit shaders i think like that there is a dedicated lightweight render pipeline for 2d and i do like this 2d sprite lighting in this particular release and a lot of the rest of stuff it looks pretty solid we've got um, again they're moving towards their new gpu based light mapping under multiple different solutions um yeah, so that is Unity 2019.2. And let me know what you think. Is there something in there that you find particularly exciting? Are you happy to see that they're not, you know, cramming down completely new features, that they're actually just kind of making what they've got there work better? Because uh, it's going to turn into a buggy mess if they don't, you know, focus a bit on refinement, which seems to be what they are doing. But let me know what you think of this release, what you're happy to see in there, what you would love to see that isn't in there. All those things, comments down below. And also let me know what you think of their approach. So this whole moving things into packages is kind of a double-edged sword. It makes it much more modular, makes it so that they can uh, iterate things better. It probably makes it so they can split their teams up better and scale up better. But it also kind of can make it so that getting new projects up and running can be a pain in the butt. So let me know what you think of the move towards packages as well. All right, that's it for now. And I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.